How? 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 How did we get here? How did we get to 200 episodes of this? Code monkey, get up, get coffee. Code monkey, go to job. Code monkey, have boring meeting with boring manager Rob. Rob say code monkey, very diligent, but his output stink. His code not functional or elegant. What do Code Monkey think? Code Monkey think maybe manager wanna write login page himself. Code Monkey not say it out loud. Code Monkey not crazy, just proud. Code Monkey like Fritos. Code Monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code Monkey very simple man. Big warm fuzzy secret heart. Code Monkey like you. Also, how they hanging down, dudes? It's me, the Meteor Raptor, and welcome back to another episode of the Meteor Raptor Reviews. Not only that, another episode of Reaction and Review with the Meteor Raptor, but not only that, the 200th episode of the Meteor Raptor Reviews. Yeah, we somehow made it to 200 episodes. Can you believe it? That is a lot of time I've wasted watching movies when I could be doing more productive things with my life. But, hey, that's how I work. Uh, anyhow, guys, thank you all so much for 200 episodes. I will kind of do another one. Of, I, I want to talk to you guys about the whole 200 factor later. But for now, we should probably discuss the movie that we're going to watch. Remember 100 episodes ago? I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, I reviewed the movie adaption of Mortal Kombat. I said it was cheesy fun, a good time, and I knew there was a sequel that I hadn't seen yet. Well, it probably doesn't take an idiot, because you could easily just look up there, or behind me, or down there, depending on what kind of system you're watching this on, to know what we're going to watch tonight. Tonight, you guys, we're going to take a look at the sequel to Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Because the sunshades I'm wearing, I can't tell if it's <coughs> excuse me, clear or not. Yeah, they made a sequel two years after Mortal Kombat called, well, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Uh, I don't know what to say, really. I can tell you this much. This three-pack I'm holding, which I got at Walmart, it it is worth buying, even if this movie sucks. You know why? It only cost me about $12, roughly, so it didn't cost me a lot of money. For $12, you get the first Mortal Kombat movie, which is worth the $12 on its own. And it's Blu-ray, so, yeah, it's worth it on its own just for that. Uh, because it also has the tie-in animated movie for the first video game and the first movie. But it also has the entire first season of Mortal Kombat Legacy. For those of you who don't know what Mortal Kombat Legacy was, it is, it runs longer than the movie itself, than the first movie. Uh, you can, it's a web series that sort of, each episode was based on a character in Mortal Kombat. There was Sonya Blade and Jax. Uh, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, Katana and Melina. I think that was it for the first season. I think. Because they were like, they were two-parter, and they were about half an hour. Oh, and Cyrax and Sector. Yeah, so I, uh, explain why I have this in a minute. They're great. There even is a second season, which I haven't seen yet, because they were paid to watch during the second season, annoyingly, but apparently that one actually has a plot, which I really do want to see. Thankfully, you can get it on Blu-ray for like 10 bucks, so I'm totally going to have to do that at some point. But you get Mortal Kombat Legacy Season 1 and Mortal Kombat on Blu-ray for $10. That's a great deal. Now, I don't know if this movie's going to be good. I've heard from a lot of people that while Mortal Kombat is a good time, Mortal Kombat, Leg Mortal Kombat Annihilation is utter garbage. So... Who knows, maybe I'm going to love it and say it's as good as the first Mortal Kombat in ton of terms of cheesy fun? And hopefully, this movie will be salvaged because, well, I love the first Mortal Kombat. Uh, it came out two years after the first one, 1997, so let's say, for the 200th time, we kick back, relax, and check out Mortal Kombat Annihilation. 
In terms of sequel titles, it's actually not a bad one. Certainly better than The Legend Begins. They just used the exact same intro as the first movie. That's... Sorry. That's... They just used the same intro and put the word Annihilation over it. What the heck? Too bad you... will die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is some of the worst acting I have ever heard in any movie, period. Oh, this movie is horrible, and yet it's so good. In the best way possible. This is so cheesy. What did they do to Shao Kahn's voice? He's one of the coolest voices there is. And he sounds terrible in this. Also, he's like four feet shorter, 300 pounds lighter. And what did they do to Shao Kahn? He's one of the coolest villains in all of gaming, and this is how they treat him on his first big screen appearance? I mean, the helmet at least looks okay, but... <sighs> okay, so the music is still awesome, and the fight scenes are actually a bit better than last time. Like, they actually did some choreographing for them. And it's not just weird flailing around, like, they actually are fighting. I'll give, them, I'll give the movie credit, it's actually... Sure, it's dumb, it's cheesy, the acting is terrible for the most part. But... I just realized... Oh, okay, that's why those look so weird. Those are actually, they're actually using your fans for once. I never thought I would hear Scorpion yell, SUCKERS, as loud as he could in the middle of a fight before teleporting away. But he just did, and it was hilarious. This movie is so bad, it's good. I, it's, it's bad. It is really bad. But it is so bad, it's unintentionally hilarious. Dumb question. Uh, Katana and Jade were pretty much sisters. Like, they were best friends since before the games even happened. Why in this movie is Jade fighting Liu Kang when he's trying to save Katana? Yes, I know Jade in Mortal Kombat 9 took her quite a while before she finally left Shao Kahn's side, even after Katana had. <laughs> what? So while the music is suggesting this is a big chase scene or whatever, the way they're going out on these horses, which by the way looks hilarious, is the least threatening chase scene I have ever seen. Also, for that fact, Shao Kahn on a horse is hilarious. So, something I'm gonna give credit to, and I will talk about this later more when I get to the actual acting. Okay, that costume was horrible. That is one of the worst costumes I've seen this whole movie so far. But the thing is, the, the extras in this movie, they are clearly having the time of their life, and they are so much fun to watch. Like, it's funny, the main actors are kind of trying, but they're... I'll talk about them later. But, like, the background actors and stuff are having the time of their life with this movie. And they're so much fun to watch. Just wanted to mention that, because... I've been an extra in a couple movies before. In fact, one coming out this year. But these guys are just having so much fun. And it's making the movie that much more entertaining. So, Raiden and Shao Kahn are brothers. That's kind of cool, actually. Uh, I don't think we've ever actually found out if Shao Kahn has family. I don't think we even know his real last name. It's always been Shao Kahn. That's actually kind of cool. I wonder if that's canonical or not. Because from what I've played, what I've read, and by that I mean some uh, Wikipedia pages, a Mortal Kombat fan site, and the first, then like the Mortal Kombat 9 and a couple of the games. Wow, that's some more bad CG. 
and Jade's dead, okay? I'm curious, are they actually like related or not? Because that's never really been talked about. Okay, look, by the time I'm done this little section, the movie's gonna be over, but this really bugs me. Shinnok is Raiden's father, according to this movie. Now, were they just name-dropping in hopes for a third movie, or is that a thing? I really want an answer to that. I'm sorry, I, that's really petty to be honest, considering the fact that the movie's going to be over in about 10 seconds, but that bugs me. Oh, movie's over. Well? That was Mortal Kombat Annihilation. What's with all the hate for it? Hang on. Okay, let me say this straight up. This movie isn't good, but it's not bad either. It is exactly what I was hoping it would be. A cheesy action movie that is so bad it's great. Uh, is it as good as the first Mortal Kombat movie? In terms of probably quality and story, no. But in terms of enjoyability, it is much better than the first Mortal Kombat movie. Keep in mind, I loved the first Mortal Kombat movie. So let me say, the $10 I paid for this is amazing because I get two great movies and an awesome season of mini-movies as well. This is more than worth the 10 bucks I paid. I'm going to lower the camera a little bit. But, yeah. Uh, so Mortal Kombat Annihilation, what's the story? It is loosely based on Mortal Kombat 3. For those of you who don't know... Uh, we have beaten Shao Kahn twice, and he resurrects his sort of wife. You have to go into the whole lore of Mortal Kombat to understand it. Katana's mother, Sindel, who I laughed hysterically at during that one really bad performance in that one scene. Uh, and essentially, they are just invading Earthrealm because, you know, screw the rules, I guess. That being said, the rules of Mortal Kombat have never made any sense, and the Elder Gods are terrible at their one job of keeping the rules. Don't believe me, go play Mortal Kombat 9. It is hilarious how incompetent the Elder Gods are. And they are just as bad here. They literally don't do anything until the last five minutes. And even then, they don't do anything. They're just like, yeah, you can't do that. You have to fight in Mortal Kombat. Like, that's it. So the whole movie, it's essentially, they all split up. So it's they go into different groups. There's uh, Sonya who goes looking for Jax. There's... Uh, Liu Kang and Katana, who go off to try and find Nightwolf, and Raiden goes to talk to the Elder Gods. And essentially, each one of them has to fight through a bunch of uh, characters who you will probably recognize, even if they're not said by name or poorly used. Some examples of this being uh, Noob Silot wearing Ormax clothing, uh, Melina being there despite the fact that she's a clone of Katana, they never even mention that, they just sort of have her be there so they can have a mud fight. Not totally complaining, but still. Uh, let's see, who else? Cyrax and Smoke being in this, but not Sector. No, Sector and Smoke, but not Cyrax, oddly. Uh, there's no real idea. They don't even talk about the whole Cyber Initiative. It just sort of happens. When in Mortal Kombat 9 and other movies, or other adaptations of the comics and the games, and even the animated TV series. Yes, there was an animated TV series. Even Mortal Kombat Legacy has a whole awesome episode on it. They discussed how the Lin Kuei were not all for it, but their Grandmaster was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and made them do it anyways. You know, 
But all of that, you know, all this lore, all this character history, all this stuff they've built up throughout three games or two games, I'm not entirely sure when Mortal Kombat 3 came out, but all this lore they've built up over the years, right out the window in favor of cheesy effects, bad acting, terrible costumes, and fun action. So on the one hand, it annoys me to no end. Because why? Well, we don't have a good Mortal Kombat movie. We have never had a good screen adaptation of Mortal Kombat. Before you say, what about Mortal Kombat Legacy, whose praises I was singing at the beginning of the episode? That's a web series. It does not count if it's released on home video. It is still amazing. You should all go watch it. I'm upset there wasn't a third season. But we have never had a good movie or TV show based off Mortal Kombat. And by good, I mean quality-wise. We have had entertaining. We have had bad entertaining. We have had, well, two so bad they're good movies. I even like the cartoon, kind of. It's cheesy and stupid, but fun. But we have never had a straight-up good Mortal Kombat movie. And there is so much they can make out of it. You can make a whole franchise out of this. They should. I know Ed Boon wants to. He's been discussing remaking the movie. I'm all for it. But the big problem with this movie, in fact, where I think it was the way it was... It is PG-13. They can't show blood, especially it's a 1990 PG-13. Which is odd, because back then we were getting away with stuff like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, Gremlins. Uh, we were getting away with a lot of gore, but for some reason they decided not to do that here. So there's minimal gore. Uh, the ideas of these characters that you know are way out of whack. For one, I watch movies with subtitles because that way I can focus on multiple things at once and it helps if I don't want to have the TV too loud when I'm recording. They spell Raiden, R-A-I-D-E-N, as he's been spelled, you know, in the games. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is how they used to spell it and they changed it. It's now R-A-Y-D-E-N, and Shao Kahn is now Shao Kahn. It's... One word with a hypo with a one of those dash things in the middle instead of well, Shao and Khan, because Khan is a title like Cordal Khan. Just look at the games, look at the comics. It's, that's been established before. Uh, yeah. That being said, let's talk about Shao Khan. He looks really weird in this in this movie because most of the film he doesn't have his helmet on. Yes, I know we've seen him without his helmet before, but that was a statue. They made a statue where you could take the helmet off. They made an action figure where you can take the helmet off. For the most part, the character is known for wearing this giant helmet, being almost 7 or 8 feet tall and nearly 400 pounds. He is also known for having one of the coolest voices in all of entertainment history. I am Shao Kahn. I rule this world. You are nothing. Prepare to die. He is also known for being a master planner, a great military leader, a horrifying fighter like he is nearly impossible to beat, and for being ruthless, merciless, and genuinely afraid of nothing. Guess how much of that they got right? Yeah, they kind of butchered Shao Kahn in this movie, which sucks because, like I said, he's one of my all-time favorite gaming villains. He's one of my all-time favorite villains, period. He's cool, he's intimidating, and the thing is, it looks like they tried. He, they tried to get him right. They genuinely tried. They tried, and I'm going to give them props for it. They tried. They didn't succeed, but they tried at least. He didn't look as much like Shao Kahn as he did Shredder from the Ninja Turtles movies. In fact, his helmet looks shockingly similar to Shredder from the first Ninja Turtles movie. I am not making that up. Just look at the two of them. They look very similar. Uh, yeah, he he's shorter. He's a lot shorter. He just doesn't look that intimidating is the weird thing. The actual plot, it's... There isn't actually much of a plot in this movie. Where the first one it was, we have to stop, we have to win the tournament, and it was sort of all the fights to get there. This one is like, hey, let's just do a bunch of random stuff until we finally get to this final showdown. Like, it gen it feels quite disjointed. There is not the same narrative structure there was in the previous film or in other adaptations. 
And we're not just following one character. Well, the first movie, we were very much just following Liu Kang. He was the main character. In this one, we don't know if it's Liu Kang, Katana, uh, Jax, or Sonya Blade. Yeah, spoiler alert, but this movie is almost 20 years, this movie is over 20 years old now. Cage dies right at the beginning for no real reason. They just decide to kill him because why not? Kind of a dick thing to do because he's a main character in the previous film, but none of the characters are played by the same actor, so I'll get to that in a minute. And from there, it's just sort of, hey, let's just go from place to place. Uh, also, did you know Shao Kahn can randomly make statues appear that can come to life and eat people? I didn't know that. The more you know. Yeah, this movie plays really fast and loose with a lot of what's been established already in two games. And maybe this is me overanalyzing it as a huge Mortal Kombat fan, if you can't see behind me, but it still stands, it's weird. So... The thing is, though, what you need to know is that it's cheesy. It doesn't take itself super seriously. Well, that came out wrong. Super seriously. Like, all the... And this is more costuming and stuff. Like, all the Outworld fighters and stuff like that. It's cheesy. It's goofy. The dialogue is incredibly stilted and poorly written. But it, it works for what it is. You're not there for a great story. You're there for Mortal Kombat. Which was at least decent. So... How was the acting? I laughed so hard at this. Like, you can talk about how Sharknado has bad acting. You can talk about how The Room has bad acting. But I'd like to, I'd like to add Mortal Kombat Annihilation to that list of acting that is so bad it'll make you laugh. Namely, one actress. I don't know her name and I'm not going to waste time looking it up because I want to just keep talking. Is the actress who plays Sindel. She, all, all the actors try. They genuinely do. I'm going to give them props for that. Some succeed somewhat. Most of them don't. But she has one line in here. You heard it. I laughed at it. Most of her lines are so oddly delivered. It is amazing to watch. And this isn't me just being biased because I love bad movies. It is such a bizarre experience watching her deliver her lines that you will laugh out loud. I told you, like myself, there's one scene with Scorpion, by the way, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, you know, the main poster characters for the whole franchise. The last movie, they had a huge fight. They were in multiple scenes. They chased after the main characters. How many scenes are they in this movie? One. And that's it. Yeah, never find out what they do after. They just kind of go, screw it, we're out of here. Like, maybe they went to a bar or something, or maybe they just got bored and went home, or... Well, not in Scorpion's case. His home is destroyed and everyone he cares for is dead. Yeah, same with Sub-Zero. His whole family's murdered. Okay, so they probably didn't go home. They probably just went to the pub or something. But he literally yells, Suckers! And then disappears. It is hilarious. But the acting in this movie, it's stilted, it's hammy, it's cheesy, it's bad. Like, there are some actors in this, like the guy who plays Shao Kahn, 90% of his dialogue is delivered with this really cheesy, over-the-top, trying-to-be-aggressive like, side to it that makes it fun to listen to. Then there's some lines he delivers when I'm like, dude, just stop, you're not intimidating, you're not even funny. Like, there's a lot of bad acting, like the guy who plays Motaro, the woman who plays Shiva, their lines are delivered pretty badly, even by this movie's standard. Now, does that mean it's a bad movie? Yes. But is it still entertaining? Definitely. Like, the guy who plays Raiden, the guy who plays... J Jax is actually the only real decent actor in this entire movie, to be honest. The actor who plays Jax, he actually delivers a decent performance. Everyone else, they deliver either a so bad it's good performance, or they deliver a really bad performance. Now, I'm not trying to knock the actors. I understand he didn't have the best script to work with, but... It's still something worth mentioning. Then we get to what is really bad. And I mean really, really, really bad. The special effects. Let's talk about the good stuff first. The costumes? They seem to be taking inspiration from Mortal Kombat 2 and 3. They look decent. Most of them. Uh, like Sub-Zero and Scorpion's costumes? They look good. Yes, I have seen better cosplay of them, but then again, we're 20 years in the future. 
and this movie it looked it probably looked decent for its time. Uh, some of the sets look very nice. I like the destroyed cities. Like I like what they did with Iridia, uh, Edenia. Or, sorry, I mispronounced it. Edenia. Uh, let's see what else. Sindel actually looks really close to her character, mostly. Like I said, Shao Kahn actually looks pretty decent. He looks weird because he's so different from the games in terms of his body size, but the costume actually looks pretty good. Then we get to... Well, you know what else is good? The fighting. I talked in the last movie about how a lot of it was just sort of odd flailing around, hoping it looked good. Here, I think they went to some karate classes somewhere and actually learned a thing or two. The fighting is decent. It's good. And the actors, or the stunt doubles, or whoever was doing the stunts, are good at it, at least. Because they do a lot of flipping in this movie. Like, a lot of jumping and flipping around in these costumes. And they pull it off really well. Yeah, probably a lot of it was wires and stuff like that, but the costumes, the sets, they actually look pretty good. You know, nowadays, they look bad by today's standards, but both for 1990 standards and just in terms of enjoyability, they don't distract you. They don't pull you out of the movie and make you go, what the heck is going on? Like the CG. I talked in the last movie about how the CG was not good. It is genuinely horrible. Well, it's worse here. Because there was a lot more. The CG... It is worse than Sharknado. It is worse than The Incredible Blurg. If you know what that movie is, it is worse than Dino Shark. It is worse than every single sci-fi channel I have ever seen. Every sci-fi channel original movie I've ever seen. It is, this is hands down, the worst CG I have ever seen. That was not a directly animated CG movie, because that would go to Joshua and the Promised Land, or Rhapsody Street Kids Believe in Christmas. Yes, I've seen those. They are garbage. But in terms of actual CG that is meant to be in a movie, this is horrible. It starts out with stuff like Thunder Blasts, Shao Kahn's weird Hadouken, which he can do for some reason, and Cage's Shadow Kick. Like, it looks bad. And then, we get to stuff like Motaro's backside when he's fighting. That sounds weird. But his centaur tail when he's fighting is horrible. Uh, the, like, Cyrax's so. Sire, so yeah, Cyrax. His net looks horrible. The Scorpion's teleporting looks horrible. Noob Psylot's uh, dual team attack looks horrible. So, sorry, the sun is starting to come down now. So this is going to look weird. Uh, it It is all horrible. And then we get to the animalities, and then, and then we get to the animalities. Dude, if you don't like the sight of bad CG, skip this movie. But if you want to laugh, and laugh hard... At some really bad CG, this movie's got you covered. Hey, what is going on? Like, the lighting just suddenly got horrible in here. Hey, sorry about that. I had to move. Just the way the light was coming in, it was not looking good. I'm sorry. But, yeah, the CG, it is so horrible. And I don't want to be mean to any of the animators, because I understand CG can be hard, but... It is so horrible, and amazingly horrible at that, too. So, yeah, the effects are some of the worst I've ever seen when it comes to what's supposed to be big-budget CG. And it looks worse than Spawn does. It looks worse than Blade. Like, come on, man, how do you get worse than Sharknado and Spawn? That being said, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. To me, they just made this movie that much better because it was so bad. I'm that guy who will love the So Bad Is Good. I'm part of a Facebook group essentially just talking about the worst sci-fi channel, the worst B-movies we've ever seen. This is totally one of them now. So I should probably hurry and wrap this up. Uh, music? The music is way better than it should be. I commented actually that... This is really weird. I did go back and check this. They reused the intro to the first Mortal Kombat movie. Just, you know, with the word Annihilation at the end. That CG is pretty bad as well. I should probably mention it then, but that's just lazy, dude. Like, even by my standards, I at least... I could have just slapped 200 on the intro, but I went out and filmed an entirely new intro. I might actually use that now. Depends how people think about it. 
or I might just stick with the King of the Hill theme one. Like, I like to change my intro every 150, 50 to 100 episodes or so. Like, every season I like to try and change it up, but I don't know yet. But, yeah, the music is still great. We still have the Mortal Kombat theme, like the do 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 Like, we have that one, and it's amazing to listen to. And then the rest of the music during the fight scenes is oddly awesome. It really pumps you up. It kind of gets you thinking, yes, Mortal Kombat. Like, you kind of... I felt my foot just kind of tapping along to it because I'm like, this is really catchy. I'm going to go find this. Uh, camera work. I talked about the fight scenes, how they're moving and all over the place and the camera work is actually pretty darn good for what it is and as for like lighting and everything else most of it is shot outside so yeah you guys i know i've probably have skipped over a lot of things in this movie that i could talk more about but i want you guys to watch it i can totally recommend i forgot the movie over there i can totally recommend mortal kombat annihilation I'm giving it a solid three and a half raptor claws out of four on the entertainment factor. On the quality factor, it gets one raptor claw out of four. But, um, but don't worry about that. This movie, gotta watch it for the entertainment value, not for the quality. You gotta know that. You need to know that you need to watch Mortal Kombat Annihilation for the entertainment, not the quality. Let me repeat myself there. But you know what else you need to know? You guys need to know how much I appreciate you. Every single one of you. At the time of filming this, I'm filming this long before I even hit, before I've even uploaded the 175th episode, just so you guys know that. At this point, I'm just sitting at almost 810 subscribers. I have no idea how many I'm gonna have by then. But I wanna tell you guys something. Instead of going on about how, thank you all for what you've done for bringing me this far again, because I've said that before and I will say it again. Thank you all so much. You're the reason I make these. I wanna say something different. You all matter. I've met people who have had days when they sit there and they think that their lives mean nothing. I personally have been through days like that. Days when they believe the whole world is against them that if they disappeared or something happened and they weren't there the next day, nobody would care. That it would just be whatever. The, the world would go on without them. And while I don't know all of you personally, in fact, most of you I don't, we have never met. In fact, I doubt we maybe ever will. I don't even know most of your real names because you use screen names. Let me tell you something as the Meteor Raptor, and as the guy playing the Meteor Raptor. You do matter. Don't ever forget that. You matter to me because you brought me this far. You matter to me because you guys commented you wanted more Thomas and friends. Because you commented you thought my one reaction video was actually better than most reaction videos out there. You guys matter to me because you guys watch the movies movie reviews I do, you sometimes comment, you sometimes like, but there's always more of you every time I come back. I want you to know that on days when it seems like the whole world couldn't care less about you, I want you to know that I care. I never met you, but I care. And don't ever forget that. Do not, under any circumstances, ever forget how much you matter either as a subscriber just a random viewer watching this video who's never seen my stuff before but most importantly as a person your life matters more than you understand it took me a long time to understand that and now i'm here to tell you your lives all matter but I also don't ever forget this that until next time this has been the meteor after saying thank you all for 200 episodes. Keep cool, and I, well, I'm gonna go play some more of the combat, so until then, I'll see all you Dino dudes around. Later. You guys are the best. <laughs>